Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. Today is hump day, and we got a very exciting show, ladies and gentlemen. We have two superstars, two boxing superstars that have graced the Sherrard Show. I'm so excited. And then one uh, boxing superstar actually has his dad with him. We're going to be taking questions with him as well on today's special topic and episode entitled, There's No Shortcuts to Greatness, ladies and gentlemen. And you're going to see two individuals who are exhibiting nothing but greatness on the Sherrard Show. Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television. Essence Television is the network for the Sherrard Show where you can see the greatest episodes of your life. From Smokey Robinson, Isley Brothers, Mel Carter, Michael Collier, Mitch Perry, as well as Nafir Charles, as well as Floyd Schofield on the Sherrard Show. We're so excited. And it's also brought to you by iHeartRadio. If you missed the broadcast on television, you can also listen to it on iHeartRadio. So we've seen the best on the Sherrard Show. Um, we've I've grown up watching Muhammad Ali's, the Ken Nortons, uh, even the Leon Spinks, the George Foreman's, and then even my personal favorites like the Floyd Mayweather's, the Sugar Shane Mosley's. And now we have two individuals that are on that track of greatness as well. And they've stopped by the Sherrard Show. One man is six up, six down. You bring him to him, he knocks him right out. And he is on the Sherrard Show this evening. Mr. Nafia Charles, how are you, sir? I'm good, I'm good. How you doing? Good to have you on the show. Perfect and then day. this young man, the next young man, you can't even hit him. As you throw a punch, he's just moving. Look at the monitor, ladies and gentlemen. You can't even hit this guy. His name is Floyd Kid Austin Schofield. He's on the Sherrard Show. He's also 3-0. and Welcome, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. It's exciting to have you on. I'm going to start off with you, Nafia, first and foremost. Um, how are you feeling now being 6-0 and and knocking out everybody like you, Mike Tyson? Uh, it gives me um, incentive to, you know, be better. Move around. Uh, a lot of people would get a little bit more time in with me, so I get a little bit more experience. Um, other than that, game plan is still the same. Now, when people come into the ring, um, are you starting to see the fear based upon um, your reputation? Most of the time, um, they make it pretty obvious. But uh, I, I try to go off of um, the boxing style, try to um, see as many flaws as possible, use them against them. And uh, once, that, once I break them down, it's really up from there. Now, what about you, Floyd? The fact that nobody can hit you. They just swing it in the air. You're not, it's not like you're having a street fight. You're, you're fight at fighting and facing other professionals, but they can't hit you like a Floyd Mayweather as well as like a, a Parnell Whitaker. How does that feel? And what's the skill behind that? Um, the skill behind that is, you know, through my dad, you know, he always taught me defense first. And, you know, it's, it's, it feels great being able to, you know, slip a punch and be like, just look at them and be like, really, that's all you got? So um, <laughs> having defense is, it's, it's like having a superpower. It's almost like having a superpower, in my opinion. But it all, it all extends from my father. Now, Dad, I'm going to throw a quick, quick question to you now. you uh, This is Floyd Schofield Jr. I mean, Floyd Schofield Sr. on the Sherrard Show. Now, Floyd, you were a boxer in your heyday? Yes, and my father was a professional fighter. So Little Floyd is a third generation um, boxer. So now um, that was always preached from day one, defense first? Yes, yes, because the goal is hit and not get hit. That's the science of boxing. A lot of people forget that it's a science to it. And um, it, it's not cool getting hit. Like I always taught Floyd, no matter, um, every hit you take now is going to affect you later on in life. So our goal is, we always said, if you get hit more than five times in one round, then you didn't do good. Mm, mm. Now, now I'm going to kick it to you, uh, Nafir. Now, a lot of people, most people, and this is for both of you, but I'm going to start with you, Nafir. Do you agree most people really don't know boxing? Most people come in there, just want to see a knockout. But as, um, as uh, Floyd Schofield uh, Sr. just said, it's an art to boxing. Have you adopted that same art from, from day one? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a lost sport. I said a lost art, um, defense. Most people, they just want to see Mike Tyson first round knockouts, the, the ferocious throwing heavy shots, 
constantly round after round. Honestly, I feel like it, it the knockout is more it it get it get you more looked at, you know, over somebody defensively sound like Floyd here. Um it it really, it really shows a, a big difference towards somebody like me that's really interested in the sport for all, all of, all of its integrities compared to somebody that's just watching it from the outside in, and they see that it's just all power shots ready to knock somebody out. Now you know, Floyd, um, Kid Austin, when you learn, see, in this in this era, everybody want to see people get swung on and get knocked out, as uh, Nafir just mentioned. Now, um, for you. What is your approach to the fight when it comes into the uh, getting into the ring to the fight? You know, I, I had Austin Trout recently on the show, show and he was saying all boxers have jitters when they're going into the ring. Is that correct? I mean, when I was a kid, yeah. Now it's not really having jitters because I've been doing this so long. It's just basically, you know, I'm going in to do my job. And worst thing can happen is what you're going to sleep for a couple of seconds. But that's not me. Cause I know all the hard work and dedication I put into the sport. So I'm, I know at the end of the day, I'm coming out the ring. All right. You know, cause my dad gives me a game plan and I execute that game plan and you know, we're going to win that fight. So I feel like now a fighter shouldn't have jitters, but and let him not have jitters like for the crowd or, you know, it's a title fight, but of, you know, of the opponent and other stuff like that. I don't, I don't agree with that one. Yeah. Now you uh, you recently had a sparring session with uh, Devin Haney, who's an also an excellent excellent fighter as well. What was that like? Not giving too much detail um, because of the sword secrecy, but what is that like being with a skilled fighter like yourself? Um, Devin, oh, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. We take away the sworn secrecy to this because Bill Haney got on another um, talk podcast and lied. Said, Oh Devin, no that Devin stopped Floyd and all this lies. So we tell them to put up the video that they got. So we called Devin out to an exhibition, six round challenging him for a million dollars. Um, if he could last more than four rounds with Floyd. Oh my goodness. You heard it here on the Sherrard show, and ladies and gentlemen. Floyd back Devin. Yeah. Floyd um, put it on Devin. Devin couldn't deal with Floyd for the first two rounds. Third round, Devin kind of won, but it was still even. And it's about that. Yeah, and then I, I was still an amateur at that point. You know, giving no excuses, but, you know, I was an amateur. I was just going down there to learn from, you know, because I thought Devin was one of the best at that at that time. And, you know, it's no hate against Devin. I just feel that, feel like they disrespected me and, like, you know. And they can't last. They, yeah. can't, they can't deal with Floyd. Well, ladies and oh, gentlemen, look at that footage on your screen. You see this kid is just an unbelievable. The last fight he had, he hit that person, or that, that individual you're fighting with a shot, and it just is unbelievable seeing how he hit him and can't get hit. Now, I'm going to kick this to you, Nafir, because look at the footage of him on your last fight. This was a ghost shot. This individual uh, you were fighting did not know it was coming. What was your setup on this? Nafir? <laughs> Um, sure, I don't know. It just, it was just a beautiful shot to land, honestly. You get sweet for it. Uh, my pop was telling me beforehand, you know, he's sweet for left hooks, uppercuts to the body. And uh, basically, we just worked his body up. And once we got the shot, it was yeah, he, he never saw it coming. He never saw it coming. Now, now, Nafir, let me let me ask you something. This is for both of you gentlemen. Think about this as I'm asking this to Nafir. Now, um, what fights or what boxing matches um, recently or in the past is a perfect depiction of the way boxing should be? Any I'm particular fight. fight you could say where it's really an art because a lot of fights, the audience, because nobody got knocked out, they'd say it was a boring fight. But give me an example of a fight where it was just a perfect art. Uh, Aside from yours. <laughs> I give you, can I give you a fighter? Yes. Uh, I probably I, I'm gonna give you two. So I, I like uh, I like Sugar Ray Leonard. Love Sugar Ray Leonard. All around boxer, superb defense, great punching, great punching, very sound fighter all together. And uh, uh, rest in peace, Marvin Hagler. Very good fighter. Also, been watching them a lot lately. Um, not really sure if I can. You know what I'm saying. Compete, not I can say compete, but uh, 
repeat their style. That's just that's just not how it's gonna go. But uh, I love the way I love the way they work. Definitely, you if you're in a box and you love their art, you have to. Wow, this kid, you, you're you're uh, old, you're wise beyond your years because uh, Marvin Hanker, rest in peace, was actually my dad's favorite fighter aside from Muhammad Ali. Um, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, those guys did it superb. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Let me get your opinion on it. I'm going to start with you first, Floyd Sr. What is your thoughts on it? Oh, I, I would say a Willie Pep fight. I like Willie Pep movement, how he won a round without even getting hit or throwing, without even throwing a punch. He won a round. So I like Willie Pep, and that's one of Little Floyd's favorite. So is, is that correct, Kid Austin? Yeah, that's one of my favorite fighters of all time. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, one thing is you were mentioning up here about Marvin Hagler, and we'll show the footage of Marvin. Marvin Hagler was such an exceptional fighter because nobody could ever take him, send him back. He would just slip punches, slip punches, and come in, and he had power and excellent defense. And he reminds me of your style a lot, Kid Austin. But you have a lot of Floyd Money Mayweather in you, as well as some Parnell Whitaker, if you see the comparison in the styles. I did not hear you mention Floyd's name. Why is that? Um, Because I wasn't really big on Floyd. My dad always had me, you know, sit down and study, you know, old school box fighters because Floyd learned from them or Floyd learned from his dad. His dad learned from Georgie Payton. Yeah, and then before them, you know, it's just a lot of passed down tricks. And, you know, you got to go all the way back in time to see, you know. Who originated it. Yeah, so I feel like, um, I mean, but Floyd is one one of my favorite fighters. You know, I'll always love the fight between him and Arturo Gatti, you know. Watching that fight gives me motivation because, you know, he was so laser focused in that fight. And, um, you know, I don't mention him because I don't, I don't really watch him, but I don't mm-hmm. take anything yeah, anymore. <laughs> but I don't take away anything from him. He's a he's a great fighter and he's somebody to study, too. Mm-hmm. Now, now, Dad, I'm going to ask you a question now. Um, when you see boxing matches of today, um, you see the Canelo Alvarez's. Um, you see the fighters like your son. Um, you see the Devin Haney's of this world. You can see the Sean Porter's. Um, what, what are your takes from, what do you take away from watching these fighters these days? Boxing became soft. It became soft. If you ask my opinion, like, like our mindset when we go in that ring, we got defense, but our job is to destroy the person as fast as possible because they're in there trying to kill you. One shot could kill a person in there. So boxing became more of a show and soft and love tapping. The people not in there really trying to destroy the opponent and get out that ring and get home to their families. So I think it got a little softer. They're giving away a lot of money, though. But it got softer. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. But now, now, um, and I'm going to throw this to you, Nafir, um, in one moment. But, Dad, why do you feel, at what point did you feel it started getting uh, soft? After the Mike Tyson era? Yeah, I think during the Floyd Mayweather era, because a lot of guys started trying to become into this Philly shell style defense, but not looking where it originated from. So they do it incorrectly. And then they worrying about an O on it, a loss on their record that they not willing to take risks. And most of the greatest fighters have a loss on their record or something like that. So yeah, people, like people got scared to fight each other because they want to keep their record clean. So they get cab drivers to fight and people that's ranked number 70. And that was unheard of. Back in Tyson era, you had to fight the top 10 person in your division, a champion. He couldn't fight somebody that was number 50. Or you now, you know, one thing that's interesting, and do you agree with this sentiment enough here that it seems like there's more politics in boxing now than it was back then? Definitely. Because... Uh... Definitely, definitely more about the uh, the money than the actual fighting. That, now, uh, for example, um, I'm still baffled on why Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence hadn't fought yet. Are you all perplexed about that? When I'll start with you, Nafir, have you ever questioned or do you question that in your mind often? Nope. nope. Because you know <laughs> what I don't know, huh? <laughs> it's pretty simple, honestly. Well, help my uh, audience out it's, before it's, some questions. It's a money fight. Um, everybody wants to see it. Pretty much everybody in boxing wants to see it. I, I can't name somebody that, that loves boxing that doesn't want to see it. But at the same time, you got two people with two different on two different roads, two different sides of the street. And they offering, hey, you take 70%, you take 30, you take 60, you take 40. 
both of them just want 50 50 or one or the other is only only willing to take more you know what i mean so at you got, I also understand like moving into the sport, understanding the uh, the money rules more often. People don't, they don't, they don't want to take the uh, what the people want to see fights no more. They want to take whatever's going to get them paid the most, you know. So uh, just understanding that in the sport and uh, seeing how a lot of stuff works now, I will say it is a lot softer. Like uh, like pops just said, it is definitely a lot softer than um, than it used to be. You you don't you rarely ever see the fights that really want to be want to be took you know like um, Ryan Garcia he was supposed to fight Devin Haney or um, Javante Davis didn't fight neither one of them so you know it, it, you get an understanding of how the sport works once you start seeing how people duck and dodge move around and and try to pick up on lower income fights. And just pick up on the one that's the ones that get them paid the most. But what does that do to you as a fighter, Nafir, when you know you're so talented? It's like when I speak to models and I see and a model is in, in Walgreens or in CVS and they see a model on the cover, they're like, wait a minute, I could do that. What are they doing on the cover? But you look at a fight, you're like, man, I could knock him out of my sleep. But you know you'll never get a chance to fight him, even though he's ranked higher than you. How does that feel? Uh age gives me motivation, honestly. Yeah, it gives me more incentive to work harder, push push further, uh, knock more people out. That way, that it'll be forced. You know, you can't really, you can't hide forever. You know. Now, what about for you, kid Austin? How does that make you feel when you know? Wait a minute, that this bomb has a title and all that sounding like Muhammad Ali, but yet you turn around and you you got to go through all these hoops and hurdles, and they hope their promoters ho ho hoping that you get too old to fight them by that time. How do you feel about that? I agree with the fear, you know, it gives you motivation and pushes you just to get up there and, you know, go snatch their belt away from them. Cause it's like, you're looking at it like, I know this person ain't on my level. So how you, how you supposed to take it is like, oh, he's just, he just, he stole my belt from me. So now I gotta go get it back. So I agree <laughs> with that. Now, now dad, for you, um, you remember the Don King era, correct? Yes. Now, the Don King era, um, in his defense, he always made all the fights. So Muhammad Ali fought Ken Norton. He fought George Foreman. He fought Joe Frazier multiple times. He fought uh, Jerry Co He He went on. He didn't fight Jerry Coney, but he fought Larry Holmes and so on and so forth. But he was still, you know, had a reputation of ripping people off, okay? But what's the difference between that era and now? Um, now, we, we independent. So now these guys could do the business themselves. They got the internet where they really don't need the, the promoter. Actually, they could bring their content right to the consumer. I ain't gonna give too much game, brother. I ain't gonna give too much. But anyway, they could bring it direct sure. to the consumer um, in, in their era. All they gotta do is build up him and not fear is to build up their name. We got a great advisor, um, Freeway Ricky Ross. And so, um, we gonna build it up where we could bring it direct to the consumer where no network and nobody can stop us from making our money and putting on our fights. You know, a couple months ago, there was um, something going on where there was Devin Haney's dad um, and it was um, also the other gentleman. They were they were lobbying for that fight. Um, his name just skipped me. Um, Lopez? You know, I'm sorry. Yeah, Fimo Fimo Lopez. Lopez. No, no, the guy that was before, the, uh, the, the black gentleman, um, Gary, Gary Russell. Yeah. So, so they were lobbying for a long time and Gary Russell called out Devin Haney. Devin Haney said, okay, just uh, let's make the fight. Let's make the fight. And apparently something happened with the contract and all that. But to your point, dad, they put that together without, you know, their promoters around or their managers, they got this, the talk started. So this is the era we live in, correct? Yes, this is the era that these young guys, they, it, because of social media, they could, like you can see now where YouTubers is getting higher paid fights than actual boxers. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. Right. They was on the zone and stuff like that. They was the main event. So that's just <laughs> now that these boxers. So, you know, it's a, it's wide open. It's a wide open market if these young boxers know what they're doing.
Now, now let me ask you a question to fear and, and Austin. I'm actually this both of you all now. Do you feel starting off with you, kid Austin? Do you feel that um, people, everyday Joes, are taking for granted how serious boxing is? Anytime a YouTuber can come on and want to fight a champion, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like an insult because you know, us like me and the fear, we through the amateurs, we sacrifice like our childhoods. We sacrifice a lot not having friends and being able to go out. And um, all this hard work as kids, and now we're growing up into the sport and spent like years and years into this sport. And it's like this person just can just be a whole different, like uh, he does something totally different in a different field and can just come into like my home. It's basically like coming to my home and make millions off of what I do. And all he did was have to have probably like a million subscribers on YouTube just for blogging about his day. Like it's like, Come on, bro. That's, yeah, like, that is, that's an insult. Yeah, that's and, and, like and, and then, a camera and going into Walmart vlogging myself, getting like 30 million views. And you're like, what, 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 did, what did he do? So. Now, Nafir, how do you feel about getting in a ring with a guy that was just playing Call of Duty the day before yesterday? <laughs> so I'm set up the lobby. I mean, send me the invite. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, but, uh, I definitely I, do, I agree with him. Um, it is an insult. Uh, I, I seen one video where some dude, uh, the Jake Paul dude, he said something like, um, he said something like YouTube was easier. Or something. And I kind of felt like that was a little, a lot of disrespect just to me and how, how hard it is for me to get up constantly and do what I do on a daily basis. You know, I mean, we talking about dudes that wake up three, four o'clock and go to the gym compared to me. I'm waking up 4 a.m. every morning doing my runs, getting back up 12 o'clock, going to the gym, going back to the gym seven o'clock, you know? So it, for me, it, it's my it's my livelihood, you know? I, I spent my whole life doing this. And for somebody to just pop in, you know, and, and fool around with some with some basketball players and some YouTubers, I feel like that's a lot of disrespect. And to say it's easier, I, I couldn't understand it. You know? You, you know, it's amazing how much respect I have. I see your questions. We'll get your questions in a moment. But I see, I have so much respect for you all. Um, all three of you there, your dad being a boxer, you, Austin, can't be hit by anything. You, Nafir, knocking out everything in front of you. And the point is that because what you all go through, as you were just mentioning, just getting up at four in the morning, uh, coming back at seven at night, you know, and then just to build up to the fight. Who would want to be the f the fighter that was going into the ring to fight Mike, Mike Tyson the night before? That's how it probably feels going in the ring with you, Nafir. Or, or feeling like, you know what, how am I going to be able to hit this guy? When I look at all the tape, nobody can be able to hit him. My question to you, Dad, is, is it correct to um, continue to put boxing in a different category with the respect level due to the danger of it? I don't know. I don't know. One of these YouTubers might have to get concussed and be put in a coma before they take it that serious. Right now, I think the big businesses is just looking at viewership. And if um, somebody have a million people watching their channel, they, they want to invest money in that person because it's all business. They don't care about the fighter. They don't care if he's a YouTuber. All they care about is the, the views. So now, and what about you, kid? Um, we gonna start beating up YouTubers. Yeah, you know I'm saying <laughs> like, but I am. I'm, I truthfully, I am mad. If I was a YouTuber and you know my money running short, I'm getting low on views. And boxing is, you know, they offer me two million dollars to come fight a basketball player. So I would do it too. But but they could um, die in there. But yeah, they gotta take it more serious. Like if they gonna box, like take it like, like take it like it's your life and at least dedicate some hours or, you know, dedicate your all to it if you want to do a, uh, YouTube and boxing, you know. So I had to agree with my dad. You yeah, know what? You got to be like Ivan Drago. Say that again? You got to be like Ivan Drago. For real? <laughs> <laughs> if you, die. you know, I didn't, even want, I didn't even want to say it, but because I didn't think anybody was going to remember it, but the way uh, he killed Apollo Creed mm -hmm. in Rocky. Yeah. 
he didn't he didn't just um put him give him a concussion he killed him and it was so realistic you remember on that when he made that jerk with his body you can tell he was dead but my question to you um you know i was speaking to rick about you all rick ross freeway rick ross his his prediction is that both of you all are actually going to make more money than floyd mayweather based upon your skill set based upon your business acumen do you share that same sentiment i'll start that with you nafir yeah <laughs> Without a doubt, um, me me personally, I'm trying to come into the division with with all fire. You know what I mean? Taking out anything and everything in front of me. Um, ain't nobody stopping me. Me personally, ain't nobody stopping me. So it is it is who whoever gets to me first. You know what I'm saying? Whoever gets to me first, we'll get the money fight. You know what I'm saying? After that. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to see who ducks me next, you know. Who ducks you next? I love it. I love it. What about you, kid? I had to agree with him on that one. You know, they're my belts in my division. Those are my belts. And, um, you know, but he asked him as far as the money thing. Um, before we met, Rick, Floyd would say his affirmations yeah, every my, day. Yeah, one of my affirmations is I'm a, a billionaire. You know, it's always been like that since I was 10. I would wake up and say it every morning, three times a day. So it's got to come. And, you know, Freeway just came in here and he's going to make it easier for us. Yeah, he wow. Just, you know, when you become a billionaire, just buy me a shirt, kid. That's all. I just want you to buy me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking to two uh, individual superstars that are really coming up in the ranks. They are as impressive as can be. Now it's time for the questions from the audience. The audience have questions for you all. Um, we're going to take the first question. This is from Leonard. This is from Leonard. He is all the way in Dallas, Texas. He said, congratulations to you two gentlemen. You are equally impressive. His question is, are you in the same division and will you ever meet up? You want me to answer that, bro? Wait, wait, it's who in the same division? Yeah, him and yeah. Not Fair? Yes. Him, yeah. and not, him and Not Fair would never fight because they, they on the same team. Yeah. So okay. They'll be in the gym. And they will be knowing each other's secrets. So it won't be a fun fight because they'll know each other too well. And I'm lighter than him. Oh, oh OK. Him. All right. Well, Leonard, you heard him. They won't be fighting. They're on the same team. You know, me and him might do an exhibition for like, you know, if money right, like 300 million. We're going we to have a Roy and Tyson type fight. <laughs> I appreciate your question, Leonard. This is from Charlie. This is from Charlie. He's from Toledo, Ohio. His question is from you, Nafir. Nafir, his question is to you is, why is it at 6-0 and oh, you feel like you can knock out the world? I mean, I train for it, you know, without a doubt, every day in my, every, every thought in my mind just lets me know more and more that if I don't work for this, I won't be able to reach it, you know. It, it's new heights that I reach for more and more every time I fight. Um, you know, I, I, I put more criticism on myself sometimes, more than my coach and my, my, other, my, uh, my dad do uh, sometimes after I fight. I want to see certain stuff out of myself that um, I know I'm capable of, and I push for it, you know, every day. I'm in the gym twice. I'm in the gym twice a day. I'm doing my I'm doing my workouts every morning, you know. So I feel like if if somebody beats me, they they gotta work. They gotta work out at least 24 hours a day, you know. Wow, wow. We appreciate your question, Charlie. This question is for you, uh, Dad, both yeah. from Dad and Son. This is from Alan. This is from Alan from Nashville, Tennessee. He said, thank you all, gentlemen, for bringing the integrity back to boxing as well as the talent. He felt that the boxing was very watered down, like you all said. His question to you is, when did you realize that you could take a punch? as well as that with your son, when you were boxing, when did you realize you could take a punch? Um, well, oh my. No, see, my dad taught me how to fight when I was little. So he used to have me beating all the kids up in the neighborhood. So I don't even recall when I ever really took a punch because by that time, I, by the time I got old enough to, to know it, it was always defense, defense, defense that my dad taught me. So. I'm not into taking punches, so I can't answer that one because I haven't been hit to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> me, it took me to get cracked to take my defense serious. So I'm in the Nationals, you know, I believe, I remember his name too, that's how hard he hit me. Wilbur, 
uh, you know, he caught me with this overhand right. I'm I'm over I'm beating him, but you know, I'm playing, I'm being lazy. So um he ended up catching me with like right on my temple. I was about 14, 15. I took a knee. I got up and I seen like three of them. And I just hopped back on him and like, you know, just dragged him across that ring. And I believe that was the turning point for me to be like, oh, they, these people can't hurt me. You know, I literally got up, went back to the corner and was like, dad, I seen three of them. My dad was like, it don't matter. You, you still winning that round. So I believe that's the point for me. Wow. Wow. We appreciate your question. We have time for one more question. Um, this question is from Michael. This is from all the men's night. Michael from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He said again, great job. Um, he loves seeing dads training their sons like the way Sean Porter does as well as Devin Haney. His question is for you, kid Austin, how do you feel having your dad as your trainer and your coach? Oh, this is my best friend right here. It's like, <laughs> it's like having a guardian angel in your corner. Cause it's like, it's not just like having a regular coach or anything like that. You know, this is somebody who's not there for the money or there for the fame. This is somebody who's there to have your back. And, you know, as a kid, you know, it usually kind of felt like punishment and stuff like that. But as I got older, it's like, he's just on me like this, just so I can make it out that ring safe. You know, at the end of the day, we didn't, we couldn't even make no money. And he would be the, you know, be the only person in the hospital with me at the end of the day if I had to be there. So it's it's a blessing, you know, having somebody that wants you to succeed, not just for his well-being, but, you know, for, for me and, you know, his grandkids and stuff like that. That's an interesting thing you said that, because if you go back to the 70s, I think you can attest to this as well, Dad. You didn't see too many boxers that had their dads in the corners with them. It was usually, um, you know, like Muhammad Ali had people from the Nation of Islam, um, you know, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard didn't have his dad, Marvin Hagler. So to have somebody that you can trust right there is wonderful because a lot of times, let me let me get this to you, dad. A lot of times when you had poor handlers, they didn't know when to throw in a towel because they didn't have that much skin in the game. Is that correct? Right, right. They don't know, they don't know the fighter. I think as a dad, being that I raised him and I watched every aspect of him, been to 164 amateur fights and all this other stuff, I me and him could communicate just with looking at each other. Yeah. So I, I could know what he's saying if something bothering him just by a look. And I could look at him and tell him how to change things up. So it's just something different, a father and son type thing. That is a beautiful thing. We thank you all so much for your questions. Um, gentlemen, where can we be able to, where can they reach out to you for any further questions you may have, they may have about you, which they do have a lot. Uh, kid, where can they reach out to you? Uh, my Instagram is kid underscore Austin one. And I got a website, floydscofield.com and my Facebook, Floyd Schofield the third. And if y'all play video games, just text me on Instagram. Like I said before, hey, you're going to start a video game party. Probably. And the ladies hit me up too, if y'all want. You guys stop saying that. You <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies, um, everybody, there's right on your monitor where you can hit them up. Um, he does look a little bit like Allen Iverson, as you can tell. So he might even have a crossover. Looks a lot like him. What about for you, Nafir? Uh, where can they reach out to you and keep up with you? What if somebody wants to call you out? Where can they personally reach out to you so you can knock them out? Uh, my Instagram is Nafir Charles, N A F E A R Charles C H A R L E S. And uh, that's very good. Last, social media like that. So. Last question on the fear for you, both of you all. Name your top three fighters of all time. Top three. Uh, Hector Camacho. Um, Sugar Ray Leonard. And uh, prior Roberto Duran. Very good, very good. There's no wrong answer to that one. All those are some power punches and hitters and very great technique. What about for you, Dad? I'll start with you before I get to Kid Austin. Um, Sugar Ray Robinson. His son. I wasn't going to include you in that. Yes, you included it. <laughs> Henry Armstrong. And um, I would say Ali. And the only reason I'm picking Ali is because he had the worst flaws. And he made it look great. And it took somebody that talented, that somebody that don't ever throw to the body 
to win those titles and stuff, he had to be amazing. So he's one of my top. What about you, Kid Austin? I got to go with my three. I always say Willie Pep, Sugar Ray Robinson, and Shakur Stevenson. Uh, was it me, myself, and I this time? I was on the <laughs> Well, gentlemen, we're out of time. Thank you so much for being a part of the Shirar Show. We really appreciate you all being there. We know these gentlemen are going to be great. And when the COVID is up, I'm going to be on ringside right there to give you an interview to talk to you when you got that belt coming down. And, kid, I remember, like I said, I'm going to hold it against you. I want that shirt when you become a billionaire. Just a shirt. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, sure. We really appreciate you. Uh, Nafir, also, we thank you, sir. Uh, for stopping by on the show as well. And you all are a team. I want to thank mm -hmm. Rick for having you all as on the show. Any final thoughts, gentlemen? No, we thank you so much for allowing us on the show. We look forward to the next one. Yep. We appreciate that as well. Nafir, thank you so much. We'll, this episode will be broadcasting again on Essence Television. And on our next episode of the Sherrod Show, we have Mr. Tommy Davison and David Allen Greer stopping by. Again, please pray for me. I hope I can get through that interview. In the meantime, have a good <laughs> evening. We'll see you then. Bye-bye now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube videos, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence Television Networks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at thesherrodshow.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.